Hello. This is a, a requested video from Giselle over at Madwitch, and it is going to be about my I Ching practice. Now, once upon a time, I had a pretty serious I Ching practice when I was younger, but now it has pretty much devolved into just the cards. This is an I Ching deck that I printed on make playing cards with my art on the back from Benabel Wen's uh, course, I Ching and the Practitioner. This is a book of uh, changes that she offers with the class, which is um, her translation of the book of changes. Um, I used the cards pretty much exclusively. Sometimes I still toss the coins. Every once in a while, I'll do the, the rosewood stocks. And I usually do a, pick a card with the I Ching when I'm traveling. Um, I will often go to either Portland or Seattle, which are um, both kind of over the mountains, and um, that's where accidents happen. So I like to draw an ink, a bit of wisdom from the I Ching and keep that in mind. Um, I have tried to do this video a couple of times, which is funny because this morning Giselle Put up a video that she tried to do a couple of times so it makes me think cosmic synchronicity but i didn't feel like what i uploaded or what i videoed yesterday was useful it came out kind of more confusing than useful so the cards make it very simple um when i was much younger uh, I came to I Ching through, uh, I used to be, study martial arts. My stepfather was a teacher his whole life, you know, from 20s on, of the uh, martial art called, called Kang Jo Fu, which is martial arts for gentle people. And I believe my sort of a stepmother, his, his wife at the time, gave me the um, Wilhelm Bing's yellow book and a set of yarrow stocks. These are actually rosewood stocks that I got off my rose bush in the front yard there. This um, book is uh, commonly used still available. I saw it at New Renaissance when I was there a couple weeks ago. And um, the way people use yarrow stalks, in my case rosewood stalks, is um, it's just a matter of getting used to it. So I'll do one reading with the yarrow stalks and one with the coins. Now the coins are much simpler. Um, they are commonly used, especially here in America. Um, and it's a lot easier to explain that way. So um, you need three coins each coin should have a front, an obvious front, and an obvious back, heads and tails. They should be the same weight, so it's best if you use the same type of coin, three of them. And then you will assign, for instance, heads two, tails three. Now, you can ask I Ching a question, or you can just 
throw the I Ching and look up the um, the hexagram and take that as wisdom for the day. Kind of like tarot. Um, the language in this book might be a little triggering for some people nowadays because it's very kind of patriarchal. <laughs> but it doesn't bother me because I kind of take it in the spirit it was intended. So we're going to do this uh, with the Deccan, hashtag Deccan Walk 2023. Uh, Marlena Tr Teresa put up her video and her, um, her spread had two questions. What are, we, what are we waiting for, I believe, is the first question. So let's ask the I Ching. What are we waiting for? Okay, so we have two heads and one tail. That would be seven. Because it's Chinese, we start at the bottom. I'm going to write a seven down. We have two heads and one tail. Seven. Three heads. Okay, this is important because three of a head or a tail is a changing line. So three heads is six. And I'm going to put an X right here, and it's changing. Two heads and a tail, seven. We're going to do this six times for the hexagram. Two tails and a head, eight. And two tails and a head, eight. Okay. So the odd numbers are going to be a straight line, straight line. The even numbers are going to be a broken line. Now, when I first was doing this, um, the, the um, way I worked this out in my head to look it up in the chart was I would just go du, 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 du. okay so that is oops upside down du, 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 du. okay this is the lake And this is du, 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 which is thunder, okay? So we have lake below thunder which is number 54. Now, because we have a changing line, we're going to do a second hexagram. Dut, dut, and this dut, dut changes to a dut, which is heaven. Then we'll leave the upper trigram the same. Okay? So it would be heaven below thunder, which is 34. This six will be a changing line in the third place. Okay, one, two, three. All right, so we're gonna look this up. What am I waiting for? Starting with number 54. Affection in moderation, the marrying maiden. Above the lake there is thunder. Okay. Thunder is the incitement of movement, taking the initiative and arousal. It excites and arouses the lake below, a fertile womb. 
there is devotion and joy. The family lineage continues. Children, fertility. Your endeavor expands as new and innovative ideas are implemented. Like the maiden engaged for marriage, plans have been implemented for a new chapter in your life path. And if you follow proper rituals and procedures for the endeavor, then you will enjoy innovation and expansion. The sage is committed to persist through the end and knows right from wrong and is knowledgeable about ethics and proper conduct. You may find yourself in a position of low status right now. Do not be tempted to elevate that status through impropriety. Seek power through ways that are dignified and ethical. Here, the marrying maiden is not the head wife. She is a concubine. Likewise, you do not currently occupy the highest title, and your actions must conform to hierarchical, hierarchical expectations. Even though you are not one who appears to wield power, though, soft influence and strategic persuasion, the concubine can ascend to the empress. Likewise, use cleverness and cunning within the constructs of propriety, and you will prevail. Yet undertaking the endeavor is ominous. Be cautious and avoid proceeding. The current efforts you contemplate do not, in fact, further your endeavor. So, a lot of the wisdom that it imparts is kind of um, cloudy. But this uh, line reading should be helpful. So if you have a changing line, you go to the second part of the description of this hexagram and they will give you line readings. So the third line is, the marrying maiden is cast aside. She returns home and in her place, her younger sister. The outcome falls short of your expectations, unfulfilled desires. Nonetheless, accept the outcome for what it is. It may fall short of your expectations, but the matter can still end well for you. Do not be tempted to engage in improprieties or unethical behavior in an attempt to meet those expectations. Let what happens happen. Do not try to manipulate the outcome. So, for instance, um, what am I waiting for? I'm waiting for a certain project to appear. I, I'm waiting for um, inspiration to get this job done. And why hasn't it happened yet? And I'm trying to do this precious special thing, but everything that I need seems to be gone or not available, or I'm having a hard time grasping onto it, holding on. So the third line reading tells me not, not to give up. I mean, it seems like it's not working out, but if I keep trying and do it in such a way that doesn't disrupt the rest of my life, I still have the opportunity to get this thing done. So if I then follow the instructions of the third line, the change will be hexagram 34. So that is kind of like the next thing I can expect, which if I'm not mistaken is kind of what the, uh, the tarot spread was from Marlena Teresa. Okay, so hexagram 34 is the changed line. Uh, vigor, great power, be alert and vigilant. Thunder in the heavens above, a union of power and strength and amplifying of all that is great. The force to exert is a force of amplifying. The sage will tread on paths that are aligned with universal laws and divine order. With heaven supporting your mu movement, it is advantageous for you to proceed with your endeavor. And that's enough. I don't even have to read the rest. It's basically saying... Keep going, even though you think you have kind of fallen behind, it's fine. This is just the way things go. You're on the right track. Okay, so that is with the coins. Now let's do the stocks. So there are 50 of these. They're approximately the same length. I... Um, 
one winter when I was trimming my rose bush, noticed that all the stalks were kind of going straight. So I thought, well, I'll give this a shot. And it's worked out for me pretty well. I don't use them a whole lot, but every once in a while. Um, when I was younger, this was my preferred method. And I would do it early in the morning on a daily basis. And it makes you become familiar with the Confucian wisdom. So we start out with the with both um, with all your stocks, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do six numbers, which become a hexagram. So the first thing we do is we take one and give it to the god. Now we're going to separate them into two piles. Ah, still there. Okay, so rudely interrupted. All right, so, sorry. <laughs> the uh, second part of the spread is what is waiting for you? What are you waiting for? What is waiting for you? Okay, so you take all 50 stocks, what is waiting for me? Put it here. This one's for the gods. Separate into two piles. One pile goes here. One pile in the hand. Now, we're going to take one stock to begin. We're going to place it between the ring and pinky fingers. And we're going to remove four stocks at a time. Pay attention because it's easy to grab five or three. Four, 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 and four until there are four or less left. We're going to place these two between my ring and middle fingers. Take the second half in hand. Remove four at a time. Four, 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 and four. So we have two left. This gives me five. Five will be our beginning number. We're gonna do this six times with the remainder. Um, so six times in total to make a hexagram. So we're gonna take it all again, divide it in half randomly, place one between the pinky and ring finger, remove four, 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 until we have four less left. We have three, put it between the middle and ring finger, take the second half, Remove four, 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 one, five, four, 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 and I have four left in my hand here. So this leaves me eight. Put eight up there with the gods. Again. Randomly in half, lay one down, one between the ring and the pinky, four, 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 leaving two, four, 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 four. leaving one, that's four stops. Again, split it in half, lay one down, one between the pinky and ring, four, 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 leaves two, four, 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 leaving one. So my total is four. Cut 
cut in half. Four. Leaves two, four, 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 leaves one, which gives me four, cut in half, four, four, leaves three. Four. That's eight. Last time, cut in half. In between the pinky. Four. Leaves three. Four. Leaves four. And that gives me eight. Oh, this was from before. So we have one, two trigrams. This is going to be even, 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 even. Wow. That is kind of an extreme one, but this is earth over earth. Um, hexagram number two. Supportive power, the divine yin. Earth yields to earth. The way to success for you is by being receptive and yielding. In the beginning is darkness and confusion, yet deep in the darkness attainment waits. So be re receptive, yielding, submit to the divine, and your journey will take you to meet the great master. Be soft, be tender, be accommodating. Leading yourself will lead you astray. Follow and you will find your way. So that tells me everything I need to know, right? Um, I am waiting for that moment when everything comes together. And I have faith that it will. All I have to do is be receptive. So that is my little... I Ching practice video for you, Giselle, but also for anybody that wanted to stop by, thanks for coming.